good afternoon one and all today we can continue with the probability of uh, probability of error calculation for qpsk system in the previous classes we calculated the probability of error for uh, binary all the kinds of binary keying techniques so in the today's session we can undergo the probability of error calculation for mra four array psk so this is one of the example of mra psk technique in this today's class we can discuss the probability of error calculation for qpsk system uh, they already you know that quadrature phase shift keying technique is also called as four array psk four array psk because uh, in this qpsk transmission technique two bits are grouped per symbol two bits are grouped per symbol and group of uh, and the group of all the symbols will be transmitted as a binary sequence as the information sequence so here because two bits are grouped per symbol you know one point that once we group two bits per symbol it will have four number of phase changes four, four number of phase changes so the outcome for this is you can be able to calculate the probability of error for qpsk system and in the last class uh, previous classes we calculated the probability of error for uh, bpsk and we compared the probability of error for bpsk with uh, ask and fsk techniques and uh, what are the expressions how you got you obtained the probability of error for binary psk system binary psk system as half erfc of root eb by n not and we obtain the probability of error for binary fsk system as half erfc of root 0.6 eb by n not and the uh, probability of error for binary ask system is half erfc of root eb by 4 n not so like that we calculated the probability of error and we concluded that in the binary psk the output snr is very high so how much it is root 8 eb by n not so that's why we concluded that the probability of error is less for bpsk over bask and bfsk in binary ask we obtained the probability of error as root 2 eb by n not and in the case of bfsk we obtained it as a root of 0.6 root of how much 4.84 eb by n not okay like that we calculated all the techniques and we compared that the probability of error for bpsk is very less because its output snr is high okay now uh, here we can calculate today we can calculate the probability of error for quadrature phase shift keying technique okay so let us uh, this actually we don't directly follow this uh, equation because uh, qpsk system if you take the qpsk coherent detection it is a combination of two binary psk techniques already you studied that one in qpsk receiver section we discussed two coherent receivers so correlators we discussed we discussed as correlators okay so two bpsk receivers are used actually so that's why we can say that uh, qpsk is a combination of two bpsk receivers so qpsk receiver is a combination of two bpsk receiver sections now uh, already i have written few points here because the probability of error is a like probability of error is a dependent factor on euclidean distance actually in the case of binary psk because only one bit is transmitted per symbol in bpsk we will have only two symbols that's why it is called as two array psk but in the case of qpsk because it is quadrature psk we will have four symbols because two bits are grouped per symbol so similarly in mra psk n bits are grouped per symbol therefore m number of symbols are present in mra psk m number of symbols are present in mra psk so euclidean distance between two successive symbols two successive symbols in any mra psk possessing uh, so what is the relation between ts and tb in the case of mra psk 
So symbol duration is equal to n times that of bit duration. And how many number of phase changes are there? 2 power n number of phase changes are there. Now what is the Euclidean distance for MLAPSK? So you general definition, uh, this we studied in the second chapter. So Euclidean distance for MLAPSK is 2 root PS into TS sin pi by m. 2 root PS into TS multiplied by sin pi by m. So based on the value of m, we can substitute accordingly and the TS is equal to NTB so that you can get the Euclidean distance in terms of bit energy, bit energy. So it is 2 root PS into TS multiplied by sin pi by m. Now please substitute uh, uh, like the values, the corresponding values in this expression to evaluate the Euclidean distance for BPSK and QPSK. See all these things we calculated in the second chapter. Okay, so what is the Euclidean distance of BPSK? TS will be TB and M will be 2. You can see that in the next slide. In, the ne in this slide you can see in BPSK, one bit is grouped per symbol. So N will be 1. So TS will be TB. So TS will be directly equal to TB. Directly equal to TB. So that's why M will be 2 power N. M will be 2 power M. N where M is the number of phase changes. Where M is the number of phase changes. So two phase changes. So that's why we can say that Euclidean distance for BPSK is 2 root PS into TB multiplied by sine pi by 2 because M is 2 here because M is 2. So that's why we obtained the Euclidean distance for BPSK as 2 root PS into TB. 2 root PS into TB. Here remember that PS into TB is the bit energy that is EB. Similarly in QPSK N is 2. So 2 bits are grouped per symbol. So that's why TS is equal to 2 into TB. And M will be 4. That is 2 power N. So you will obtain it as M as 4. M as 4. So that's why what is the Euclidean distance? 2 root PS into TS. TS is 2 TB. And sine pi by M. In the case of QPSK, M is 4. So please substitute M as 4. Here sine pi by 2 is 1. So that's why we got directly as 2 root PS into TB. Okay. Now here sine pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. <coughs> is 1 by root 2. So root 2, root 2 gets cancelled. Root 2, root 2 gets cancelled. And you will get 2 root PS into TB. 2 root PS into TB. Because here root 2, root 2 gets cancelled. And directly you will get 2 root PS into TB. So here we can conclude that the Euclidean distance for BPSK and QPSK and QPSK is same. Already we studied this in the second chapter. We studied this in the second chapter that the Euclidean distance for BPSK and QPSK is same. Now because uh, we know one point. What is that point? The, if the Euclidean distance of two techniques is same. If the Euclidean distance of two keying techniques is same, then we told we discussed that the probability of error also remains same for almost all remains same for both the techniques. So that's why already we calculated the probability of error for BPSK and we obtained it as half ERFC of root EB by N0. Where EB is PS into TB. Where EB is PS into TB. EB is the bit energy, bit is, which is the product of power dissipated per symbol and bit duration. So that's why the probability of error remains the same uh, for both the techniques. Almost all remains the same. Anyhow, we'll calculate uh, the probability of error for QPSK in the today's module. But you should know one point that because the Euclidean distance of BPSK 
and QPSK is almost all same. It's same. That is, and is equal to two root PS into TB. The probability of error uh, for both the techniques will also be approximately same. So we can calculate the probability of error for QPSK in the today's module. So, but what is the probability of error for BPSK? Half ERFC of root EB by N naught. And uh, also note one point that QPSK receiver is a combination of two BPSK receiver sections. So our QPSK probability of error uh, depends on BPSK probability of error. Okay, because QPSK, in QPSK, I think if you recollect the QPSK receiver section, it consists of two coherent detectors. There we called the co coherent detectors as correlator. Correlator is a combination of product, product like a multiplier and a low pass filter. So like that we have two correlators, one in the in phase and other in the quadrature phase. In phase has a carrier cos omega ct and quadrature ha has a sin like sin omega ct minus pi by 2 phase shifted. Carrier will be used. So like that QPSK receiver is a combination of two BPSK receivers. Okay, please remember that point. So, so here from this slide we can conclude that because the Euclidean distance for BPSK and QPSK is same, uh, we can say that probability of error also re approximately remains same. Let us move to the next slide. If you see this slide, please observe this slide carefully. Here, uh, this I think you can remember that this is the constellation diagram of the QPSK system. This figure shows the constellation diagram of QPSK system. So constellation diagram represents the, the corresponding presence of symbols. So actually in QPSK already I told you M number of symbols are there because how many bits are grouped here? Two bits are grouped. So two square will be four. So four symbols are there and each symbol possess a different phase. So if you observe S1, S2, S3, S4, these are the four symbols. These are the four symbols, okay, which are present due to the quadrature phase changes. So due to quadrature phase shift keying. So if you observe S1 phase, it is 45 degrees with respect to X axis. If you observe uh, S2, it is almost all how much phase shift difference? Almost till 135. Okay, like that plus 90, plus 90. Like that, uh, each has a phase difference of, each successive symbol has a phase difference of pi by 2. Okay, and uh, all the four symbols have different phase. In such a way that each successive symbols are separated by pi by 2. Because 2 pi by m is the phase difference between two successive symbols. Now, if you see, this is a general constellation diagram of QPSK. Now, we are telling that we are going to calculate the probability of error. How much error will be there? And what is the possibility of error? Okay, now, for example, let us assume symbol S1 is transmitted. Uh, how many bits are there in that particular symbol? Two bits. So. Four symbols are there and each symbol consists of two bits because two bits are grouped per symbol. So S1 is a combination of two bits because it is a QPSK. Now let us assume S1 is transmitted. Now please observe the figure carefully and tell me how many possibilities of there, how many possibilities are there to occur error. So for example, here two possibilities are there. Sometimes, for example, if our the symbol, if the symbol S1, so due to some phase variation, due to some error, if this symbol S1 is shifted towards the x-axis, what is x-axis? Phi E of T, that is in phase carrier. And phi naught of T is the, which carrier? Quadrature phase carrier. And this phi E of T is the, in phase carrier due to the even bit sequence. And this phi naught of t 
is the quadrature the quadrature phase carrier due to due to odd bit sequence because in qpsk transmitter the entire sequence is divided into even and odd sequence so that's why x axis is in phase carrier due to the even bit sequence and uh, phi not of t is the quadrature phase carrier due to the odd bit sequence now for example if you assume that symbol s1 is transmitted here this symbol s1 can be detected as either s2 or s4 if this symbol s1 is detected as either s1 or s2 or s3 we can say that there exists an error if you transmit s1 you should receive the same symbol s1 at the particular time if you detect it as either s2 or s3 or s4 then we can say that there exists an error okay so in qpsk there is a possibility of occurrence of an error there is a possibility of occurrence of an error when the vector o a the vector please observe the vector o a that is nothing but the symbol s1 this vector o a made by the symbol s1 if it crosses crosses by an angle of theta if it crosses by an angle of theta from the decision boundary so let us assume this angle be theta and similarly the towards uh, y axis that is phi not of t assume the same angle as theta so if the angle is theta okay so in qpsk there is a possibility of occurrence of error whenever the vector oa made by s1 if it crosses by an angle of theta towards the two decision boundaries one is x axis and other is y axis if our s1 crosses oy that is if it crosses by an angle of theta then we can say that there exists an error now here what is the phase difference between s1 and s2 90 degrees already you know that one because in qpsk the phase difference between the two successive symbols is pi by 2 okay so phase difference between s1 s2 is 90 degrees at the same time the phase difference between s1 and s4 is also 90 degrees and our decision boundary what is the what is the decision boundary the x axis and y axis so the because this is perpendicular to the it's lies in between s1 and s4 axis we can say that the phase angle theta can be assumed as pi by 4 so here you can consider theta as pi by 4 okay so whenever please remember so whenever s1 or any symbol crosses by an angle of pi by 4 from the decision boundary either phi of t or phi not of t then s1 can be detected as s4 s1 can be detected as s4 here whenever s1 crosses by an angle of okay when can you detect that it is s4 whenever s1 okay please observe this slide carefully whenever s1 crosses by an angle of pi by 4 from the decision boundary that is phi phi of t then you can detect s1 as s1 will be detected as s4 that is symbol error will occur symbol error will occur that leads to bit errors because here symbol is a combination of two bits okay similarly whenever s1 crosses y axis by an angle of theta crosses y axis by an angle of theta if it crosses for example if oa that is symbol s1 crosses y axis that is phi not of t then it will be detected as s2 if it crosses x axis if it crosses phi of t axis by an angle of theta then it is detected as s4 if s1 crosses y axis then it is detected as s2 okay so the what is that phase here the phase angle is the angle is 
pi by 4. Whenever S1 crosses pi by 4, whenever S1 crosses, our S1 axis crosses pi by 4, then it will be detected as either S2 or S4. If it crosses Y axis, it will be detected as S2. If it crosses uh, X axis, it will be detected as S4. Now here, first let us analyze the analyze the detection of S1 as S4. Now from the triangle OAX, sorry AOX, please consider the triangle AOX. So I assume the same triangle. Now what is symbol S1? The axis OA, the vector OA, it's made by the symbol S1. Now if this crosses, crosses, if this crosses OX axis, if it crosses OX axis, if it crosses OX axis, that is phi of t, that is phi of t, this is phi of t, please wait. This is phi of t axis by an angle of theta pi by 4, by an angle of theta pi by 4, then it will be considered as symbol S4. Then it will be assumed as symbol S4. Okay, so when a symbol S1 will be detected as S4, whenever S1 crosses by an angle of theta, okay, crosses the OX line or you can say that this is a decision boundary. So you, here you have two decision boundaries. One is phi e of t and other is phi naught of t. So whenever our S1 crosses either phi e of t or phi naught of t by an angle of pi by 4, then it can be detected as either S2 or S4. Consider the x axis that is A O X. If you assume the triangle, consider the triangle A O X symbol S1 crosses O X axis, crosses O X axis, then it will be, then it will be detected as symbol S4. Now please observe the triangle A O X. What is the distance O A? That is the symbol energy. So that is nothing but uh, you can say the symbol uh, distance. So that is root P S into T S, root P S into T S. So that is how much root E S, root E S. So what is O X actually? O X is root E S into cos theta, root E S into cos theta, where root E S is P S into T S. Similarly, please uh, assume the triangle A O Y. So in the last slide, we assumed the triangle A O X, A O X. And use, by using that, we calculated the OX. What is the OX vector distance? It is how much? Root PS TS into cos theta. Similarly, let us calculate the distance OY. Okay, you can calculate that by using the triangle AOY. So similarly, whenever S1 crosses the decision boundary phi of T by an angle of pi by 4, please wait actually. So whenever S1 crosses the decision boundary, whenever our S1 crosses the decision boundary, which decision boundary? Phi naught of t by an angle of pi by 4, by an angle of pi by 4, then S1 will be detected as S2. S1 is detected as S2. Then there is a possibility of occurrence of symbol error. And finally, it, it uh, like you will get the bit errors. Finally, we will obtain the bit errors. So please observe the triangle A O Y A O Y. So whenever our symbol crosses, already I told you, whenever this symbol crosses O Y axis, O Y axis by an angle of theta. Here also the angle is theta by an angle of theta, which is pi by four. It will be detected as symbol S two. Okay, so that's why what is the O A distance? Actually, it is always root E S. Because in BPSK you studied that one and even in QPSK in the constellation diagram, we calculated that uh, symbol uh, distance. It is how much root PS into TS. 
because you obtained the equation as root PSTS multiplied by. So finally you will obtain O Y as what is the O Y distance using O A distance. It will be root E S the distance O A is root E S multiplied by cos theta because cos theta is O Y divided by O A vector. OK, so O Y will be root E S into cos theta. So it will be root P S into T S multiplied by cos theta. So remember that the distance O X is equal to O Y equals to root E S into cos theta. So whenever our S1 symbol crosses, crosses this O X axis or O Y axis by an angle of pi by 4, then it will be detected as S2. If it cross O Y, it will be detected as S2. If it crosses uh, OX axis, it will be detected as S4. In the similar fashion, uh, S2 can be detected as S1 or S3. So whenever S2 crosses OY axis, it will be detected as S1. Whenever S2 crosses uh, OX axis, negative OX axis, it will be detected as S3. And once again, S1 is a combination of two bits. All the symbols are combinations of combination of two bits only. OK, like that uh, our symbol can be detected as. S3 can be detected as either S2 or S4 and there is a possibility of S4 detection as or S3. So whenever a particular symbol crosses the decision boundary by an angle of pi by 4, then it can there is a possibility of error. OK, we are going to calculate that probability of error. So we, uh, we considered that the symbol S1 is transmitted. So it can be detected as S2 if it crosses O Y axis by an angle of pi, pi by 4. Similarly, S1 can be detected as S4. S1 can be detected as S4 if it crosses O X axis by an angle of theta, which is pi by 4. So anyhow, finally you obtained O X as root E S cos theta and O Y is also root E S cos theta. OK, so now let us calculate the probability of error uh, whenever the symbol S1 is transmitted, whenever the symbol S1 is transmitted. Let us move to the next slide. And uh, let us calculate the probability of error. Before that, uh, already I told you that QP, you should uh, remember that QPSK receiver is a combination of two BPSK receivers. It is a combination of two BPSK receivers. UPSK receiver consists of two correlators because each BPSK receiver is a coherent detector. The coherent detector we can also call it as correlator. Because correlator is a combination of multiplier followed by low pass filter. So each QPSK receiver consists of two correlators, one correlator in the in phase and other in the quadrature phase, one in the in phase and other in the quadrature phase. Now error probability of BPSK error probability of BPSK due to imperfect phase due to imperfect phase. So when you will get imperfect phase. So whenever a, the particular symbol S1 crosses either OX axis or OY axis uh, and each axis has a like magnitude of root ES into cos theta. Then the error probability of uh, one particular BPSK that is one correlator is PE is equal to half ERFC of we use it the same expression of like uh, we obtain the probability of error for BPSK as half ERFC of root EB by N0. OK, where uh, EB is equal to ES in the case of B, BPSK. But here ES is not at all equal to EB. Now we are going to calculate the probability of error of QPSK as half ERFC of root. How much distance the symbol should cross to get to consider it as an error? It should cross root ES into cos theta towards the X axis or uh, if it crosses root ES into cos theta towards Y axis, then also there will be an error. So that's why we, rep we represented the product of product of two possibilities of errors. So whenever S1 crosses 
uh, root e s cos theta by an angle of uh, pi by 4 towards the x axis or root e s cos theta with an angle of pi by 4 towards the y axis then it can be considered as either s2 or s4 so that's why i represented root e s into cos theta multiplied by root e s into cos theta divided by n naught so that is equal to half erfc of root over root e s multiplied by root e s it will be e s into cos square theta into cos square theta divided by n naught just i simplified the corresponding expression so what we are doing here because qpsk receiver is a combination of two bpsk receivers first let us evaluate the error probability of uh, error probability of uh, one bpsk receiver so uh, assuming that symbol s1 is transmitted and due to imperfect phase for example if s1 is shifted if the vector made by s1 is shifted towards either x axis x axis is having a distance of root e s cos theta it will be detected as s4 and if it is uh, moved towards uh, y axis having a distance of root e s cos theta then it will be considered as s2 so that's why the two times i represented root e s cos theta this is ox and this is oy where theta is pi by 4 in the next slide, we will substitute the theta as pi by 4. So, P is half ERFC of a root ES into cos square theta divided by N naught, where ES is simple energy, which is PS into TS. Okay, now let us move to the next slide. Now, here for QPSK, already you know TS is equal to 2TB. TS is how much? 2TB. So already you got uh, root ES karma, root ES into root ES. So it will be ES. So ES is PS into TS. I represented like PS into TS. But in QPSK, TS is equal to 2 TB. Symbol duration is twice that of the bit duration. So PS into 2 TB into 1 by root 2 whole square. 1 by root 2 whole square divided by N naught. Divided by N naught. So it is equal to half ERFC of half ERFC of a root. How much? 1 by root 2 whole square. So that will be 1 by 2. And because TS we replaced as 2 TB, uh, 2, 2 gets cancelled here. So you will get root PS into TB divided by N0 divided by N0. So finally you obtain the probability of error for first BPSK receiver or you can say correlator 1. Correlator 1 as half ERFC of root EB by N0. So otherwise you can directly represent the probability of error for one BPSK receiver as half ERFC of root EB by N0 and other BPSK receiver as same value half ERFC of root EB by N0. But because you should understand the analysis I told you whenever the symbol S1 is transmitted, if it is deviated by an angle of pi by 4 towards the x axis, it will be detected as S4. And that x axis has a distance of OX, which is root ES cos theta. Similarly, whenever S1 is shifted towards y axis, having a distance of root ES cos theta by an angle of pi by 4, then it will be detected as S2. So we took the two possible conditions and we calculated the probability of error for correlator 1 as half ERFC of root EB by N0. So this for correlator 1 is nothing but the BPSK receiver. So in QPSK you will have two BPSK receivers. So this is the first receiver probability of error. Now similarly, similarly, Upon substituting the value of TS as 2TB and theta as pi by 4 in the symbol energy, we will get the same probability of error, same probability of error for correlator 2, for correlator 2. So correlator 2 probability of error is also same as that of correlator 1. That's why PE2, what is PE2? Probability of error 
for correlated to or for the second BPSK receiver. So it is equal to P1 is equal to half ERFC of root EB by N0. So what is what you should remember here? QPSK consists of two BPSK receivers. So BPSK receiver is generally called as either the coherent detector or the correlator. You can also define it as correlator. So the probability of error for both the correlators or both the BPSK receivers is same and it is equal to half ERFC of root EB by N0 because upon simplification by considering theta as pi by 4 and TS as 2TB, 2 to gets cancelled and finally you will get P root PS into TB by N0. Here EB is the bit energy. Okay. <clears throat> so finally you obtain the probability of error for correlator 2 and correlator 1 as equal and it is equal to half ERFC of root EB by N0. Now let us calculate the total pro probability of error for QPSK system. So probability of error for QPSK system. So before that, let us calculate the probability of getting correct symbol. For example, if you are transmitting S1, you should detect it as S1 only. You should not detect it as either S2 or S4. So whatever the symbol transmitted that should be detected as the corresponding signal like symbol only. So the probability of getting correct symbol PC can be expressed as the product of probabilities of correlator one sorry character one and character two. Okay so that's why we so for correlator one we are expecting the correct symbol we are expecting the detection of correct symbol. So uh, total probability of getting the correct symbol let us represent it as p suffix c p suffix c it is the product of probabilities of probabilities of the character 1 and character 2 so that is pc1 and pc2 what is pc1 actually it is 1 minus probability of getting error probability of getting error for the correlator 1 so that's why 1 minus pe1 and PC2 is also replaced and PC2 is also replaced as 1 minus PE2. PC1 is replaced as 1 minus PE1 and PC2 is replaced as 1 minus PE2. So PC is equal to 1 minus PE1 multiplied by 1 minus PE1. Why? Because probability of error for correlator 1 and correlator 2 is same. That's why here I replaced PE2 as PE1. So 1 minus P1 multiplied by 1 minus P1. So this is in the form of A minus B whole square. So just we split that. Okay. So what is P1? P1 is the probability of error for correlator 1. P2 is the probability of error for correlator 2. Both are equal. But here we are calculating the probability of getting the correct symbol. Instead of detecting S1 as S2 or S4, we want to detect it as S1 only. So the probability of getting the correct symbol is the product of the probabilities of character 1 and character 2, which is 1 minus PE1 into 1 minus PE2. Because PE1 is equal to PE2, we can write it as 1 minus PE1 into 1 minus PE1. So it will be in the form of A minus B whole square. That is 1 minus PE1 whole square. Just uh, you can split that. So upon splitting, it will be a square plus b square. So a is 1. So 1 square will be 1 plus b square. b square is pe2 square minus 2ab. 2 into 1 into pe1. So 2 pe1. Now the probability of error pe1 for the correlator 1 is very less when compared to 1. The probability of error pe1 that is for BPSK receiver is very less compared to 1. That's why PE1 square is negligible. Okay, PE1 square is neglected because it's uh, the value of PE1 is very less compared to 1. Actually here it is PE2 square, not PE2 square, it is PE1 square. I will modify it. Okay, 1 minus 2 PE1 plus 
PE one square only. Okay, so any at any cost PE two is equal to PE one, but here please write it as PE one square. Now you can neglect this PE one square because PE one is far less than one. So that's why probability of getting the correct symbol PC is equal to one minus two PE one. So take you need actually what you need PE you need not PC. We need the total probability of getting the error. So probability of getting the error PE can be obtained as one minus PC one minus PC. The probability of error here this is uh, not PE one. The probability of error. of error pe is given in terms of pc as 1 minus pc here pe is the probability of getting the error symbol error and pc is probability of getting the correct symbol you know the sum of those two should be equal to 1 total probability will must be equal to 1 so pe is equal to 1 minus pc but pc is 1 minus 2 pe1 please substitute in this expression so finally you got Uh, total probability of error. Total probability of error is equal to two into P one. Two into P one. But what is P one? Probability of error for correlator one. Or else this is also equal to two P two because P one is equal to P two. So probability of error is equal to two P one. Already we calculated the P one value. So probability of error for Correlator one. How much you obtained? You obtained it as either correlator one or correlator two. We obtained the probability of error for correlator one or correlator two equal to half ERFC of root EB by N naught. Root EB by N naught. Now please substitute the probability of error for correlator one, that is PE one, in the above expression to get the total probability of error. So the total probability of error for QPSK system is twice that of the probability of error for correlator one or correlator two. For correlator one or two, the probability of error is half ERFC of root EB by N naught. Now you need to get the total probability of error for QPSK system, not uh, the individual one. So PE is equal to two PE one. So two into half into ERFC root EB by N naught. Two into half ERFC of root EB by N naught. So two two gets cancelled. So finally, what is the probability of error? What's the probability of error for QPSK system? It is obtained as root EB by N naught ERFC of root EB by N naught. But in the case of BPSK. You obtained it as half ERFC of root EB by N naught. In the case of QPSK, probability of error is ERFC of root EB by N naught. So half gets cancelled because QP in QPSK you will have in QPSK you will have uh, two BPSK receiver sections. QPSK receiver is a combination of two BPSK receivers. So our probability of error is ERFC of root EB by N naught. Where EB is the bit energy, which is PS into TB, that is power dissipated per symbol and bit duration. So, fi uh, so finally, you obtain the probability of error for QPSK system as ERFC of root EB by N naught. But because the Euclidean distance for BPSK and QPSK is same, almost all we obtain the probability of error. Almost all it's same because It PE is also like inversely proportional to root EB by N naught, but in the case of BPSK also, the probability of error is inversely proportional to root EB by N naught. So in terms of error performance, in terms of error performance, both the BPSK system and QPSK system almost all provides you similar response, similar response. Because probability of error is inversely proportional to root EB by N naught. ERFC is a complementary function, so probability of error is inversely proportional to root EB by N naught.
So with this, uh, we can conclude the probability of error for QPSK. So with this, uh, we can conclude the module 7. At the same time, uh, almost uh, like your third unit is over. So any one of you please respond and tell me what is the probability of error for QPSK system? Any one of the student please tell me what is the probability of error for QPSK system? How much we obtained? ERF of square root of EV by N naught ma'am. Okay, very good. So it is, so that's why we can say that error performance is inversely proportional to root EV by N naught, which is similar to BPSK system. Okay, because QPSK is a combination of two BPSK receivers. With this, we can conclude our uh, third chapter. So tomorrow, uh, I request all the students to please uh, be thorough with the third chapter, second and third chapters. Okay, please go through the second and third chapters, revise. Now only I will upload uh, this module with fewer corrections. I will upload uh, these two modules. Please go through all this uh, second chapter and third chapter. So tomorrow I will revise second and third chapter if possible. Okay, so please be thorough with the second and third chapter. So tomorrow I will start the fourth chapter. Tomorrow I will continue with second and third chapter. Like I will ask questions. Or else each and every student can come prepare with one corresponding module of either second chapter or third chapter. That's your wish. But uh, every student should uh, like uh, play some role in answering the questions of second chapter and third chapter. Okay, that is your homework for today. So second and ch third chapter tomorrow we'll have revision. So uh, every student at least should uh, be thorough with at least one module of second or and third chapters. You should be thorough. So whenever I play the corresponding uh, slides, you should uh, respond. But tomorrow I won't start the fourth chapter because tomorrow is the Saturday. I won't start. Just I will revise the second and third chapters. And you should explain at least one. Each student should be able to uh, be thorough with at least one module of second and third chapters. Okay, Mottam Chadukun Randi. So like I will ask only questions and you can interact regarding this complete uh, the revision for second and third chapters. I think you will have uh, all modules with you. Please go through all those modules of second and third chapter so that we can revise. And from Monday onwards, we can continue with our uh, as usual fourth chapter. Any doubts? Any one of you please respond. Chadukun Ustara. Will you prepare or not? Please respond to me. Say yes or no. Yes, ma'am. Only one student. What about other students? Okay, if no doubts, you can leave the class. So tomorrow is a revision class for second uh, and third chapters. Please uh, be thorough with that. Okay, you can leave. 